okay, we back again, and and I'm with Mike again, and we we gonna try to, you know, like we got Larry, well, we got Jordan and Pippen, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever we want to call ourselves. He he he's Jordan, I'm Pippen, you know, just in case we get it straight here. I want to give a shout out to my friend Loretta. Thank you for your email, and Pastor Giotra. I know you, even if you didn't watch this, you watch it now. So we, we, maybe you can help us on this piece about, you know, straight as the gate. You know he's talking about Jesus. Now, we got a lot of other gods out here. Jesus always talked about uh, he's the way, he's the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by Jesus. I don't care how much good works you do. I don't care how much, many times you serve. I don't care if Mother Teresa, you go out there and serve and do anything you want to do. But if you don't accept Christ as your personal Savior, I guarantee you, you will bust hell wide open. That's just the bottom line. You know, you, you, can't, you can't get around this. And he said that because, you know, he was dealing with the law and he was dealing with grace. We, he know people will favor the law over grace. Jesus was full of grace and truth. So he came to us to identify the Father. And he put this little piece in here so that we can come back to it and say, well, what are you talking, what are you talking about straight as the gate? Narrow is the way, you know. And what is this wide as destruction? Because he knew that he was going to have problems with the Israel, Israel, to try to loosen this law of Moses. So he he, he put the hair specifically here, he's going, he just teaching. And that's all Jesus, Jesus was a man, what he called a rabbi, a master teacher. Just like Paul. Paul was a master teacher. He even broke it down a little, a little more. I heard, I heard uh, um, uh, 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 one of these scholars, I told you, we too smart. And they said, there's no speaking in tongues today. That was back in the Corinthians church. I said so. And then he alluded to the fact that if you speak in tongue today, that you, you're a devil. That's a spirit. I said, man, you got to watch yourself. <laughs> now, the devil can speak in tongue, but God people can't speak in tongue. So I, I said, you better, you better watch yourself, preachers. Just because you can, some of us still can. So it, it ain't about you, it's about what God did. They even say no prophets nowadays. You know, that, that was back then. See, everything back then. The first church. Not not these these other churches. So, you know, we hear when we they ask a question because somebody um uh, I'm mean, not mentioning the names, and they had they had died, and they and they said, "Well, you know, where is where is he going?" I mean, you, we heard um, a lot of uh, commentary say, "Well, more than one way to God." These are rich folk who saying these things, but what they doing? They opening themselves up. So I had to go in. And, and, and that, you, we have to understand the cross, we have to understand the resurrection, and we have to understand the ascension. Those three areas, you know, because I was teaching on that this morning. See, when we, we, we died with Christ. You know, we were judged with Christ. That's the cross piece. Matter of fact, what he did on the cross was so powerful. He... he he nailed, he nailed the coffin, Satan's coffin. He nailed it. And then when he came up, you know, Satan was having a party. When Jesus died on the cross, he thought he he won. And then all of a sudden, he came up. <laughs> it was terrorized. He looked. <laughs> they don't have a party no more. I thought we killed this man. One of the most powerful parts of the gospel is the resurrection part. Because when he died, we died with him. And then when he rose, we rolled with him. And that's why he said in 1 Corinthians 
15, he said, death, 50, uh, verse 55, said, uh, you know, death, where's your sting? <laughs> Gray, where's your victory? Is, is there any evidence or proof that, or what determines whether you rose with him or not? Is there any evidence in your character or your lifestyle or... If you have been buried with him, if you've been raised with him, what is what is the evidence? Well, he told he talked about it in Romans six. You should you you should you should be walking like him. You should be you should believe him. You should walk like him. You should have power and authority like him. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, right? A new creature. And what happens to the old? He's a new spirit. Our old has passed away. Now, does it happen immediately? Yeah, the Spirit of God comes into you. Okay? Now, Paul came back in chapter 12. He talked about renewing your mind. Because you have folks still acting the same way they act before prior to conversion. So he came back, and that's why he said renew your mind. With what? With the Word of God. And so he wants you to act like him. He wants you to look like him. He, you know, he, he, he's, he's constantly changing. He, you look in this word and what the word say is true. If your word disagree, your mind disagree with what this word is, you change your mind to this word. You don't change the word to your mind. And that's what some folk are doing out here. They're changing this word to their mind. They're looking at it and saying, well, you know, do not judge or criticize and condemn others. And then they say, well, he, he, he's not talking about this. He's talking about something else. He mean exactly what he said. You got power. When he said that you're the righteousness of Christ, he said you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He's also gave you power. But we don't believe that because you keep saying that is back then. So all those acts of the apostles, he said, well, that was back then. That's not now. He give you those things, that love, that, that, that grace. See, we, we did a teaching on, you know, faith takes. Grace makes. Everything you got, well, like the lady said, where's my stuff? It's in you. Now, how do I get it? You got the faith. You got to believe. And then you believe in it's just not just saying I believe. No, you gotta it comes with an action. Faith without works is dead. It's like the body without the spirit, right? It's dead. It is so simple that it's so hard. Just like this stuff. People will go around their work and trying to get this. And you're going to have a mechanism that's out there already for you to get that. All you have to do is commit. Mm. All we did was commit last August and we said we're going to commit to this money. $5 a piece. I, I'm going to get that $5 in a few minutes. And what do we do? We sat here since August of last year putting $5 a piece together and we haven't even counted the money. That's ten dollars a week, and we saw how much with one dollar a day. That's seven dollars a week, and I put an additional ten dollars a day. And when you give, you sow that seed. One brother said, "If you don't have enough, you sow it, because that's that's a seed. That's not your harvest. So if you got eight dollars, and your bill is eighty dollars." Don't cry. Show it to the kingdom. I said, what? I said, he's right. Because if you sow it, you harvest. You remember the widow? And then the Lord put in my heart, he put it in the widow's might. She gave every those two pennies, she gave everything she had. She probably wasn't expecting when she went home. <laughs> What's going to be waiting for? I guarantee you she broke out in the praise. Because Jesus is watching. He said, You were putting in on your, your excess. He said, She was putting in all she had. 
And that's what the rich man didn't understand. The rich man was holding on. He said, well, sell all you have and give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand the principle. See, the riches had him. He didn't know that if he would gave all he had to the poor, the Bible said that when you give to the poor, you, you lend it to God. God becomes a debtor. And when God becomes a debtor, he pays his bill. Now I want to allude to something you mentioned about you, you personally put up one dollar per week. Now just, just do the math. Now we collectively, on a small scale, yes. we just put up five dollars a week. That's right. Okay, that's ten dollars. That's thirty percent more than on an individual basis. Yes. Which you could put up more. Yes. But the principle just, that I'm trying to allude to is where there's unity, there is strength. Sure. And that's just two of us. What just if three, about. four, or five? Just by coming to together doing something like this. And not only that, by combining you were putting only five dollars, so you were putting twenty-five percent less. That's right. But we were actually getting thirty percent more by combining. It was, matter of fact, you remember we we used to talk about this young the, the the Asians. They would sit around and be about ten of them, and each of them when they came to the table, they said they well, they met once a month and they would bring a thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that's ten thousand dollars, right. and they would take the ten thousand dollars and give it to one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. They give it to one of them so the one can do what he has to do with his business, make sure his business stay afloat. And they do this every time they come together. The reason why I was laughing because that that's a true story. My wife and I used to do alterations, and I met this Korean. Yes, and that's what they would do: a thousand dollars a month. A month, and at the end of the month. They would take that one person would take the ten thousand and go and start a storefront. And yeah. I used to laugh with him, and, and, and that's why I was laughing now. And I said, if one of us did it, the first one that got the ten thousand wouldn't be back no more. Probably would. You know, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but that's the way we have rolled with one that's another. That's right. And um, you won't see that one no more. But. Then they will start over again the next month. That's right. And they keep doing it, but then we complain about them driving certain cars, kids go to private schools, they move in our neighborhoods, and we buy our fried chicken from them. Exactly. You remember that, that picture called Raising of the Sun? Mm. Uh, it was uh, Sidney Portier, and what he did, he gave his money. He wanted to open up his liquor. His, mother, his, his father died, okay. and his mother gave him the, the insurance money. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to be a big guy in town, so he gave the insurance money to this, this con artist. He didn't know he was a con artist. Con artist said, well, we're going to open up a liquor store together. Okay. And meet me back. Give me the money. Meet me back here. I have your license. Mm -hmm. The guy never showed up. <laughs> That's what you were alluding right, to. Right, right. We took right. the money and he ran yeah, with it. Take the money and run. Right. And that's, what we, that's why we're so cautious of one another. I can give this stuff to somebody and they will drink it and they'll say it's good. Mm -hmm. And that's all it was to them. Right. They didn't see it as a business. They didn't see it as a commodity or that they health, can help or, or make money on this thing. And that's what, uh, you know, you can you can speak to your blue in the face. Only, or, you know, uh, some other folk, I, matter of fact, when I left today, you know, I know we were on this subject, but this is, this is a good topic. When you, and Dar is my witness. When he probably left, he saw a little girl sitting on the corner selling uh, lemonade. Mm -hmm. A dollar a glass. I would give that girl a dollar just because she's sitting up there trying to do something. Okay. okay? The fathers is teaching them early mm -hmm. about selling. And we think our children is too good at five and six years old to make money like that. We ain't got nothing to do with how the lemonade tastes. Ain't got nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even drink the lemonade. But I would give her a dollar because I see the see what she's trying to do. And Jesus said, take press down, shaking together. And if you look at what Jesus did in this word, when Acts 2, 
They had to be of one mind. They sold and put their money together. One mind. And it, it, he said, it's two. He says it's two. Gather together in my name. I'm in the midst. Right. And whatever you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Is but, it, but, but just consider the math. One should chase a thousand. One should chase a thousand. And two should put ten thousand to a flight. That's why I'm telling, you know, I'm at, I, 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 I blew on that, that, that stock. <laughs> that nine, that six cent stock. That oil stock. Mm -hmm. Because if that thing go up just a dollar, I done made 30000 or more dollars. If it goes up one dollar, mm -hmm. it goes up 50 cents. I got fit, made $15,000 or more. People don't, people don't, don't, don't understand these principles. They say, well, you, you doing, you gambling just like every, no, no, no. The difference between stock and a lottery ticket, a lottery ticket only one or two people win. Mm -hmm. At the expense. At the expense of everybody else. But stocks, everybody win if they got the stock. If you had Facebook and you had stocks when they went up, everybody went up. If you may not win up a proportion of the, the owner who, who, who put it out there because he put up all his money on it. Right. And when businesses sell a business, when they say it costs five, ten billion dollars for a business or you know all that, all they doing was trading stocks. Mm -hmm. What the business is worth. They don't give cash. They give the cash to the people that's working there so they can pay taxes on. So why why is it that we preach unity but practice separatism? Because of the way we were raised and what we went through as a, as a people in this country, we went through a lot. And then, and then you, you, we, we, you had the Martin Luther King era, and then you, you had the, uh, you know, you had the Sharpton area uh, era. Now I don't know who he is. Uh, and then you got, the, you know, uh, Jesse Jackson and all those folks. We don't have real, real, real what we call leadership that will will guide. I'm hoping some of these young people when they when they grow up. But they, uh, they understand that they have to get folk, and it's not just black and white and all those other things that we talk about. Jesus didn't, he didn't. These folk, Israelites, you see, racism is a, is, is a recent phenomenon. These guys didn't care. You go overseas, they ain't got nothing to do with whether you're black or white. They got something to do with what ethnicity you are. If you're a Jew, you can be a Jew, black or white or whatever. You can be a Muslim, black or white or whatever. You're just a Muslim. You just happen to be that ethnic group, okay? It ain't had nothing to do with whether you black or white. Because I remember when I was watching Saudi Arabia, they, they were interviewing one of the cousins. He said, I'm first cousin. His first cousin was blue black. The the other cousin was white with blue eyes. And they said, they said, You first cousin? He said, Yeah, we first cousin. Well, you know, hey, we both. Both of them had that little turban over their head. Both of them wealthy. They couldn't get up. You a Jew, they, they just don't like Jews. If you black or white Jew, they don't like you. So that brings us back to the principle of in Christ there's no there's it's one spirit. It's one spirit. No no spirit no Jew. male, no female, no Jew, no Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. So why are we separated on a Sunday morning? And why do we say those tea party saints? They speak in tongues over here as Tea Party saints, and they speak in tongues over here, but yet and still at an apostolic and Pentecostal church, and yet and still they speak in tongues down in a uh, 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 in not speaking tongues in May in Baptist church, but yet and still, what's the, what, what's going on? You didn't even they know. But then, though I speak with the tongues of men, men, men and, and, angels, angels. and have not love, right? It profits me nothing. No thing. So we know love is a big love, faith, love and hope. Is. Right. Right. Because without faith, you can't please God. That's why you got that faith and, and grace. Because you can put on a good show, dress the part, look the part. Yes, ball, right. Sit in the right place, drive the right cars, live in a nice neighborhood. You know the book from what? Front to back. But I love. And it's not the love you think the love is. See, we think that the human, the human love. And that's what that's what uh, my man Peter was talking. He said, "Peter, do you love me?" 
Peter said, I, I phileo you. Do you, you a guy by me? Uh, I, I phileo you. But you different know, type of love. I'm still, well, working on that, that unconditional Unconditional. Stuff. I mean, it's easy to do. love you because me and you get along. Yeah. But well, what it, we don't get along. But, we still got love. Them. Yeah, but I mean, but we do, so it's easier. But I'm talking about those who, you know, that challenge you, challenge every other word you say. That's all right. Find fault, criticize. Yeah, that's all right. Some people don't. Some people say, well, God, you don't love me because you chest. He said, who he love, he chest, he chastens. Yeah. And he, some people say, well, that means teaching. Yes, it does. But some are some hard necks. You need some stuff done to you when he take chases. He allows it. Yeah, well, God uses the word to chastise us for our benefit. Yes. But I, I have actually used the word to condemn. Mm. In my growth, yeah, you're right. I mean, you, well, you may not have that done it, but yeah. have you ever had it done to you? Oh yeah. Somebody oh, used yeah. the word to make to belittle you, to yes. criticize you, oh, yeah. you down, and to oh, control yeah. you. Yes. And we know that controlling spirit. I, I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? God, God frees and, um, you. Yeah, he, yes, he does. He frees you from yeah. all that. Yeah, you get to a point where you look back, you actually feel bad. I'm laughing now, but not at, at the stupid penalty part. Right. Of this. You know, the growth, and that helps me to be patient when you see other people struggling, doing what you did. That's why I don't say I just let them struggle. I say I let them go. You got to be like the prodigal son and his father. Sometimes you got to let them go to experience that part of life so they will be grateful when they turn. But but when you don't, you sometimes you don't know that you don't know. You have... When I was doing it, I was zealous. Mm -hmm. I thought I was doing God's service. Yeah, uh, what Paul did too. Yeah. I mean, he said he did it out of ignorance. Yes. <laughs> he did it out of ignorance. On fire. He ignorance on fire. fire. Dangerous. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, well, he was doing the name of. Yeah, well, he his uh, Jehovah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't Jesus. It wasn't first. Jesus. He thought he thought Jesus was this uh, a heretic. To Jesus, he had to come and say, Paul, why why you? Why, why are you why are you doing this to me? And I believe that's why a lot of people have turned against the word because we have really corrupted and given the ministry a bad name. That's why we gotta preach it. Yeah. We gotta preach the truth. Just like today, I preach the truth, that preach the truth with love. There's no place in the Bible where they talk about tolerance. We preach the truth with love. Mm -hmm. I know the world, the world don't want the world talks about tolerance. We say we're gonna preach. The truth with love, and then you better preach the truth. Cause if you don't, if you call yourself a teacher, God gonna deal with you because you messing up people. That's why I take one scripture at a time and look at the totality of that scripture in context, so that you get a, a totality reading on what we're saying here. Is Jesus? Only. You ain't getting to God the Father unless you go through. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to fight that, you fight with Jesus. You don't fight with the, the, the messenger. He said it. <laughs> and I know I'm going to get a lot of uh, calls here because folk die without uh, Jesus. There is no other name. There is no other name under the heaven whereby a man must be saved. And that's in here. That's in here. And if you really want to, really, he, he's, he's having that conversation with his disciples in John 5. You really want to know how Jesus talked. So look at John 5, John 6, John 7. He, he fought, he, he just, he, he, he told people. And then they all walked away in chapter 6. And he told his disciples, he said, you going to leave me too? He said, where will we go? He said, and I choose you, and I chose the devil. <clears throat> chose the devil. Question. Yes. On that note, have you ever become someone's enemy by telling them the truth? Yes. I mean, you was like this. Or my family, family members. Oh, you was like that. Yeah. Because you told them the I'm truth. I'm telling the truth. And they you fight. You became an enemy. They, they, will, they will fight you. When it comes to this word of God, 
when you tell them the truth, they say, well, that's your truth. I say, well, well tell me your truth based on this word. <laughs> I'm open. Okay, okay. But you got to show me okay. in here. We, when we discuss it, we're going to discuss in here. We ain't going to discuss what our mind, what we think. Well, I believe. No. What did the word say? That's when you come a damn dangerous when you say, what? Uh, uh, I believe. No. What did the word say? And then read the whole context. And don't take it out because text, context, you take the con and the text and you separate it. So you take the text out of con, what do you leave you with a con? Mm -hmm. And that's what the devil does. He leaves you with that con piece. Mm -hmm. And because you don't know the word, you can't come back with the word. And a lot of people say, well, I don't understand. I say, well, he said, we're all getting get understanding. So we're going to wrap it up. I know we stood a little longer than usual today. But this was a good conversation because people got to understand Jesus is the only way. And it, it, well, we can sit down and sip over a cup of coffee. Go to my website and <laughs> well, I'll put it up there and you can go there and sip it over a cup of coffee. Healthy coffee. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Mike and I, we'll see you next time.